Welcome back to another edition of In the Trenches with Doug Skeen. This is our Big Ten Championship version. Iowa versus Michigan. Michigan 42, Iowa 3. Skeen, we're going to start the first play, this first scoring play with Blake Corum. What a great run here. A really nice cut, but watch the right side of the line here and how they open this thing up for him. So, Ballas, it's a, it's a vanilla 4-3 front here, and we are going to run a base read option play with a little motion here with Sandra still. And J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback, is going to be reading this stand-up defensive end on the far side of this defense. There is a combo block scheduled here with right tackle and right guard, down lineman in front of them to middle linebacker, and then the right tight end there, Schoonmaker, is supposed to go get this front side linebacker 44. That's how you would draw that up. And backside is cut off blocks, yada, 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 right? That's pretty simple stuff there. But what's interesting here, as soon as motion happens with Sandra still, 44, the near linebacker, is coming. And he's coming hard. And he gets washed in and caught up with the gut with the double team with the right tackle and right guard. And Zinter gets his hands on him, gets really sticky, and puts 44 on the ground and rubs his belt buckle in his face, which is just cash money awesome. And Stuber here takes care of that defensive lineman. And the really nice thing about this ballast, Schoonmaker is expecting to block the middle linebacker. I'm sorry, the 44, the front side linebacker, but he exchanges and picks up 31 over the top. And that allows for a big old hole here, and then Blake Corum makes the great cut. And then the other thing you've got to notice is the downfield effort by Sandra Still and the quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, is off the charts. Great helmet sticker blocks all over the place on that one, Ballas. 5.30 of the first, Skeen, and uh, this is the second touchdown. The second he threw it backwards, from our vantage point, I could tell it was a backwards pass, and I told my guys in the press box, I said, he's throwing this thing. But you've got guys bearing down on him, and I want you to watch the top of the screen here, the tight end, and then the throw, just right on the money. Well, we'll get to the throw in a second, but let's go back to the beginning here. You've got, again, a, fo a formation that Michigan has shown throughout the course of the season, with the with with Edwards in the backfield, who they know we like to throw the flat pass to. So here's the variations off of it. And so Edwards takes off. The offensive line is just showing like a play action. I'm just going to keep you with the line of scrimmage across and keeping an eye on things. The key block out here is absolutely Eric All, who really creates enough space for Edwards to launch this ball and get it downfield. So you've got to watch him out of the backfield here. He, he tracks his guy and really gets him kicked to the sideline there. And I know it's not much of a devastating block, but trust me, Ballas, that was a huge one to allow that pass to be thrown. If he doesn't get that block, I think this thing goes as an incomplete because he doesn't have the space to get that arm going. And the pass itself, uh, no disrespect to the two quarterbacks. This might have been the best deep ball thrown all year from Michigan. It was that good. And, of course, yeah, he had a defender bearing down on him, and he took quite a shot. But, I mean, that was just an unbelievably executed play. And credit to the coaching staff for using familiar tendencies to throw a total curveball at Iowa here that worked perfectly. Okay, 328 of the second. And this is a great play by the quarterback. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, where's the offensive line breakdown, Skeen? And you're telling me this is not on the O-line and that McNamara, this is on him, and he does a great job recognizing it and throwing it where they ain't. Yeah, so people might be wondering, hey, well, we got a, we got pressure here. Where's this coming from? What offensive line messed up? I don't think any of them did here, Ballas. When the ball is snapped, the startus moves to his offensive right which means the center, right guard, and right tackle have any blitz responsibility that comes off the right side. Normally, the back would be left in there to pick up any blitz uh, threats that come off the left side. You've only got two blockers on the left with the left guard and left tackle. Well, Iowa brings two linebackers. They bring 31 and 44. So Keegan picks up the first one, 31 here. And 44 is the one who's left clean. Normally, the back would pick up 44, but Hassan Haskins is, by design, leaving the backfield here on purpose. And the outstanding thing here is that the quarterback, McNamara, understands his protection and knows there's no help to pick up 44 coming off the left A-gap. And so he 
calmly moves to his right, waits for Haskins to clear, and Haskins is going right where those two linebackers were. So you throw at the blitz, Ballas. This little flat route here by this running back against this blitz is perfect. And you've got number 92, the defensive end, trying to, to keep up with Haskins out of the backfield. So Iowa takes a shot here, bringing a blitz on first and 10. And we run this the perfect play, and the quarterback sees this, understands his protection, slides to his right, and delivers a very catchable ball. And it's a great job by him. I thought this was outstanding by the quarterback. Okay, 212 of the second. I think this is the only negative play we're doing. This is the the blitz and the sack. And who's this on, Skeen? Because I'm having a hard time figuring out who missed an assignment here. It doesn't doesn't really it doesn't really come to, to mind right away. Well, Ballas, we've got to go to the old sky cam here because it's the best view to look at this stuff. And what you notice here, pre-snap, the center here, Andrew, Andrew Vistardis, looks over to his right, and he points at 31, meaning the offensive line is looking at him or setting him as the mic. They're using him as the set for their pass protection. As soon as he does that, number 44 immediately alerts the rest of his defenders with some kind of signal that he's going on a blitz because you notice the safety comes up and number 31 looks over everybody recognizes it and so the game is on and what iowa does here is they overload the left side of our protection here they're running a double twist and tackle twist on the right tackle and twist on the left with an extra linebacker so i think this is an example of good scouting and game planning by iowa to understand our protection tendencies and overload the left side of this offensive line. Keegan is nice in the way he picked up the blitz. The only criticism I really have of the way this thing is blocked is our left tackle here, Hayes, you can't block two. You got to just pick one and block that guy, and then your quarterback can try to make a play off the other one that's unblocked. Maybe you can make a miss, maybe you can't, but you can't try to block two. You got to pick one, and in this example, I believe that Hayes should have stayed on the twisting guy, but I, I can't kill the guy, and I understand what he did here because he tried to take the inside threat. And so he came off of the defensive tackle that's looping, and he just got an arm on 44. Either way, it didn't do much. This is an example of Iowa scouting and game planning and using our tendencies against us on this one. And they, on this one, they caught us, Ballas. They got us. I think this is just an example of a good play by them. And even if we did block that one clean by the left tackle, I think this is still probably a sack or an incompletion at, at best. Play five skiing at 829 of the third. You want to see violence? Watch Joel Hunnick for tight end and Andrew Stuber here and what they do to their guys here. And this allows this play to work. You get Zach Zinner out there on a pull, and Hassan Haskins has an easy touchdown here. So, Ballas, this is familiar Michigan football all year long. We're going to pull the right guard and left guard. If you're going to do this, you have to have really good blocks, gap or down blocks by the near lineman. So the right tackle and first tight end here, Honingford, have got to have good gap blocks, and both of them do. A, uh, a right tackle here, Stuber, knocks this dude a yard and a half off the line of scrimmage, and Honingford does a really nice job here attacking this defensive end and absolutely putting him on the ground and lands on top of him. I always love that. And when you do that, you're creating space for your guard to cleanly pull to the edge. So Zinter's got space to get over here. The other nice block here, Schoonmaker's got sticky hands on number 44. So that guy's locked up, and now we have space to get our big old right guard around here on their safety, number 28. That's a little bit of a mismatch. Zinter gets out there, gets his paws on him. That's over with. Hassan Haskins walks in the end zone. And we got a touchdown. Uh, the backside guard, Keegan, normally would be looking for number 31, who just does a dive here to try to get to something. But Keegan ends up just watching this thing and, and probably should be charged a buck or two for uh, watching this one. And, but I'm, I make that as a joke, Ballas, because having been there, done that, sometimes it just happens. And when you get in the <laughs> film room afterwards, you say, I, I like a helmet sticker on that one, Coach. I, I, I didn't have to get on the ground or anything, and we scored a touchdown. And it's kind of fun, and those things are always fun. 
But uh, the play worked really, really well because the right tackle and the right two tight ends did their jobs and allowed the space to get our lead blocker out to the edge in the mismatch. Touchdown. Okay, 110 of the third. And Skeen, you're telling me this is on the, on the offensive line. I'm thinking, okay, the whole time, who missed the block here? But this is on the running back, and he's had great patience all year, didn't this time, and really gave up a big play here. Yeah, I'm going to put this one on Blake Corum, who's who's in, in credit to Coach Mike Hart, Haskins and Corum and Edwards. They've showed patience and good running style all year long, but on this play here, Ballas, this one I believe – was going to be a heck of a running play if Blake Corum can just let Zinter get to his block. So we're pulling the right guard to come over here and kick block this defensive end. You go to the inside out number. You're trying, that's number 97. If you're going to block him, you want to get your eyeballs on the near number nine on his jersey. And if we get this kick block, if Corum can just let Zinter get there, and show a little patience and get inside of his his backside there. Look at what our left tackle, left guard, center, right tackle, Eric all out here at the 20-yard line, and Wilson at the bottom of the screen. All the blocks are there, Ballas. They're all there. This was going to be a 15, 20-yard gain easy. If Corum can just make a cut there and get inside of his guard, but he didn't, and we got a big old fat tackle for loss. I felt bad for Zinter on this one because it looks like it's all on him, but I don't think it is. I think your back's got to give you a little help on a situation like this, so I wanted everybody to know that this one was not on the offensive line. <laughs> you got to tell your back to give me a second. I'll get there. Okay, final play, 11.32 of the fourth. This is the one-handed catch by Luke Schoonmaker, but watch the blitz pick up here by Hassan Haskins. I do everything back for Michigan, who's had an outstanding year. These guys have been picking up blitzes all year long. Just another example of Mike Hart's excellence when it comes to coaching. Yeah, I totally agree here, Ballas. So this this is some good patience, and obviously Michigan's seen a lot of this all year long. But pre-snap here, you could look at the middle linebacker, number 31, to his right, just a few yards deep, number four. Both of these guys are going to come on a blitz off of our offensive left. And so the safety is the first one to strike. But what's interesting here, Ballas, is if you watch the left guard here, Keegan, he's got his eyes on his linebacker. He's got him in blitz protection. The center, Andrew Fastardis, is working to the right. So when the center goes to the right, your back has you, your back has blitz protection, anything extra off the left. And so Keegan here has the discipline to allow that flash of color, the safety, to fly off of his left shoulder because he sees 31 coming as well. So Keegan lets that guy go knowing that Haskins has got it. And he picks up his linebacker assignment really, really nice. The starters, right guard, Zinter, and right tackle, Stuber are all nice. Hayes over on the left side is doing a nice job. And Hassan Haskins is right there to pick up the extra blitzer who he does a nice job inside out, gets him away from his quarterback, allows him to step up in there and deliver a football. McNamara gets it over there to Schoonmaker, who makes an unbelievable catch. This guy's just gotten better and better as the year's gone on. He's got really nice hands. And, of course, we score a minute later here. But outstanding blitz pickup, outstanding discipline to, to stay in there here by Keegan at left guard because it's hard to do bows. When you see that flash of color, your instincts are to take it. And sometimes guys do that. And you take that bait and you lose your assignment and you make a mistake. And now you got bigger problems. They didn't do that on that one. And it was well blocked for a touchdown. Or not a touchdown, but a, a setup for a touchdown. 